I thought I'd show you a few stamp books and booklets that I seem to have picked up over the years. I haven't got many, just these four, and let me make it clear, I'm by no means an expert on any of these. In fact, if you can tell me more about them, then I'd be really grateful. So after a bit of research, I've discovered that there are two types of booklets. These two on the left here are classed as books of stamps issued by the post office. I've got this used George V example here and a much later pre-decimal Machin version here. These two on the right, however, are referred to as booklets as they came out of vending machines. Apparently, the first stamp books were issued here in the UK during the reign of Edward VII. Unfortunately, I don't have an example of one of those to show you. Stamp booklets, however, were apparently issued during Edward VIII's brief reign. Advertising in these stamp books first became a thing during George V's reign, and we'll take a look at some of these when we look through this book in a second. Advertising apparently stopped in 1943 as we got into the war years and then returned in 1953 and continued until about 1975. Okay, so I've arranged these books and booklets into date order, from the oldest on the left to the most recent on the right. So it goes 1935, 1951, 1968, and finally 1972. Let's start with the oldest one, released in May 1935 and celebrating 25 years of the reign of King George V, it's the Silver Jubilee set. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this book of stamps has been used and there are some loose stamps inside, but what I think you might find interesting are some of the adverts. So let's take a look. All right, I've just opened up the first page. And as you can see, there's an advert for the leverless swan pen. Always use swan ink in the office, it says there. On the right, we've got some airmail stickers. There we go, a couple of half penny Jubilee stamps that would have been in here, unfortunately. Like I said, they've been used and are now loose. We now have Britain's safest investment. Oh, sorry, Britain's safest investment. Salt Dean Brighton. Next page. New stamp. One penny red. But check out this advert on the left here. No nerve power. Just pause the video if you want to read what that's about. Oops. And then here we have something. What's this? Def. The first and only non-electrical bone conductor. All right, let's just carry on. Three and a half pence stamps there. Bournemouth Holiday Realm Supreme. So if you fancy going to the coast on holiday. There you go. Go to Bournemouth. Who am I? I can't be bothered to read that, but more to the point, I can't see that because my eyesight is so bad. I am a prudential heritage policy, so that's who he was. That's his life assurance, maybe. And then on this page, we've got fresh and clean without washing. A wonder cleansing wafer. A 
Stamps and Drages for Fine Furniture. Britain's Greatest Credit Furnishing House, it says, I think. Some postage rates here. More postage rates. An advert for trust certificates. And again an advert for that bone conduction apparatus. So that my friends is the Silver Jubilee stamp book. Let's move on now to this one shilling booklet from 1951. So we're in George VI reign. It says we should have four halfpenny stamps, four one penny stamps, and four one and a half penny stamps. Well, let's have a look. On the first page, we've got some postage rates on the left there. And then we do have four intact one and a half penny stamps. Moving on to four one penny stamps. And finally, four orange half penny stamps and then again some overseas postage rates on this back page here and there we go as mentioned earlier there were no adverts in that booklet they didn't return until 1953. Okay, let's look at this 1968 stamp book now. We've got this Peregrine Falcon on the front, and we should have, according to the information on the front, 18 four pence stamps inside, along with the return of the adverts. All right, let's have a look. Retire with £6,255. Prudential assurance there. The next page shows some postage rates. And again, overseas airmails. More overseas airmails. And then secure the future for only 15 shillings a week. £9,000 at the top. What's that? The Canada Life. So insurance company. There we go. What have we got here? Have a stake in the nation's future. Back the scouts. Moving on to the first pane of four pence stamps. Six in total. A stamp will bring French into your home. Can just make out the word linguaphone there. What's that? Free 36 page booklet. Suddenly your future looks exciting. It has happened to thousands of SOC students. What's this? Home study course. The School of Careers. 
There you go, that's the SOC. Um, another pane, four pence machins. So we're up to 12 now, we should have 18. A bigger salary, what's this? Home study again. Again, I think that's home study, is it? And then the last pane of four penny stamps. Machins. Keep up the fight against cancer. Imperial Cancer Research Fund. More insurance policies, life insurance, Sun Life Assurance Company of Canada. £4,315 for you at 55 for retirement. I'd want a bit more than that. An Oxfam appeal here, I think. Oxfam can't stop earthquakes. And again, the Oxfam appeal continues, I think. And finally, we're stepping into 1972 pot pickers. On the front here, we've got this lady in her fancy flowery dress stood next to this old post box or pillar box. Let's take a look inside and see if we've got two of each of these stamps. All right, here we go. What's that say? British pillar boxes number six. The cover drawing shows the latest type of pillar box designed by David Meller, the first went into service near St Paul's Cathedral in 1968. The red box is rectangular in shape and bears the royal cipher and crown. You can read the rest. There we go. That just explains the picture on the front here. Then we've got some, what's that, inland letter rates. Overseas postage rates. Here we go. Life insurance. 4,315. Didn't we just have that in the last uh, stamp booklet? I think we did. Four machins. There we go. Decimal. Decimal version. Right, what we've got here. Sun Life Assurance again. Wow, they really are hammering this Sun Life Assurance. Did anyone take this up? Let me know in the comment section down below. The four stamps. God. Sun Life really hammering it home. Look at it. Interesting how the George V stamp book had adverts for um, like common day objects. You know, there was that scouring pad and I think a hearing aid. Along with a few, I think, life insurance adverts, but this one, this one, this one is all about the life insurance adverts. All right, there we go. If you're interested in learning more about stamp books and booklets, well, Ian Harvey has done an excellent video on the subject, a comprehensive deep dive into the history, design, 
and the production of these little items. I'll link that video in the description down below and urge you to check it out as he really does know his onions, or in this case, his stamp booklets. Okay, that's this one covered in a nutshell. If you've enjoyed it, then please subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Hit the like button if you liked it and turn on that notification bell. Anyway, thanks for watching if you have, and until the next one, bye for now.